chapter number five. And what verse? What is it? 22. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, I'm just going to reiterate what we said this morning, and then we're going out to let you go. We had a wonderful time this morning. How many baptisms this morning? We had four baptisms this morning, and over 100 men up here, and we can't get 30 to uh, <laughs> the Sunday school. Yeah, but we had a great group of men and, and women who dedicated and rededicated of their lives to Jesus Christ. Let, let's read verse, if you will, number 22, and I may just pull one point, and then um, we will uh, be ready to go. Uh, the 22nd verse, the 23rd verse, and the 24th verse of the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 5. Those who have Mark, chapter 5, and verse 22 will say amen. amen. Those who don't have it will say not yet. Oh, praise, praise the name of Jesus, Ro. Um, let's read verse number 22, 23, and 24. Verse 22, read. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, Come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what Jairus' daughter saw in her father. That's what we talked about this morning. Why don't you have a seat? And we'll say a word or two uh, about, uh, about that. Now, what we did this morning, we talked, uh, we talked to the fathers, we talked to the men of the church, and we said to them that this little girl, 12 years old, was sick, but what she saw in her daddy was that when he had a need, he knew exactly where to take it. And we extrapolated from that, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of degree we might have. It doesn't matter what kind of job we might have. It doesn't matter who our families are. It doesn't matter about how much money we have. There will come a time when there will be a need in our lives. And I said this morning that God can fill all of our needs. And the reason... See, everything that God created, everything that God formed, he filled. God never formed anything that he didn't fill. You see, God did not, God did not make the fish and say, oh, now where am I going to put him? No, when he made the fish, he already had the seeds. You see, when he made the beast of the field, he didn't say, oh, now what am I going to, what am I, what is he going to eat? He already had the grass. You see, and so it was important for us to understand that whatever God formed, he filled. He, and, and, and whatever our needs are as a child of God, whatever your need is, as, now if it's a legitimate need, I say if it's a legitimate need, whatever your needs are, God can fill it. All we have to do is just give God a chance. But God can fill our needs. And, and, and you see, the one that created the heavens and the earth formed the earth and he also filled it. Whatever he made, and I told you this morning that uh, he gave man uh, the power of thirst and then he filled that with water. Not, not Seagram 7, water. Not beer, water. See, that's God's, that's God's remedy for thirst. And if we, and if, if we just drink good water, pure water, we'd be all right. But the reason many times our people have all kinds of diseases and, and uh, uh, debilitations in their bodies is because they're drinking something they ought not drink. I, I like me, drinking Coca-Colas. I like Coca-Colas. 
and, and it's not good for you. I mean, there, there's too many of them, you know, and I know that, and, um, and I try not to drink too many of them, but uh, water would be better. You know, my wife is always saying to me, you know, you know, eat healthier. She eats healthy. She's a healthy eater. Uh, vegetarian, doesn't eat much meat, that sort of thing. But, uh, and that's good. That's good. But me, I'm, I'm carnivorous. <laughs> you know what carnivorous is. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. And, um, but if we would eat and if we would live, like the Lord ordained us to eat and live, we would have longer lives. We would have uh, more happier lives if we would just follow God's pattern. I, I keep telling you one of these days I'm going to talk about uh, the biblical diet because there is a biblical diet. There is a way to eat. Now, I confess, I make my confession. I, I don't follow the biblical diet. Uh, I make my confession. I don't. I don't follow the biblical diet. But it's in there. Is in there, and if you follow it, you, you will be much healthier. And I know that. I know that. I, I, I know that. But but fried chicken is just is just you know it's, it's just it's just tempting. You know, T-bone steak is just is just it's just tempting. You know, and um, but if we would just follow God's plan, if every father and every mother would follow God's plan. Now we're getting ready in our, in my class. After we get through, after I get through with the men, uh, teaching them uh, why they were created and what they were created to be. And once they understand that, they go out and take dominion. You can't take dominion until you understand who you are, what you was created to be. You never will take dominion. You never will take dominion. See, God wants us to occupy till he returns. He wants us to occupy this world until he returns. He wants us to occupy. That is, take control take control. And, and what that means is that you got everything you need. You got everything you need. You got me. And I have all power in heaven and in earth. So God wants us to take control. He wants us to uh, take dominion, dominion. But you cannot. And I say to the fathers and the young boys, you cannot take dominion until you know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you are drinking anything stopped up in a bottle. If you don't know who you are, you will shoot stuff in your veins. You blow stuff through your nose. You don't know who you are. You don't know what to do with yourself until you understand who you are. And then, of course, when we get through with that, then we will deal with uh, God's uh, design, uh, God's design, and God's role, uh, and God's role for the woman. And uh, you know, so many times, you, know, you when you read the Bible, sometimes what we do is, you know, we read it based on what we've heard, and. Um, and we just, we do a number on Sister Eve. And, 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 and of course, Eve was first in the transgression. That's, that's what the Bible teaches. You know, she was first in the, in the, um, in the, in the transgression. But it, it really was. Now, when you think about it, it really was not Eve that got us into trouble. You see, when you really think about it, it really wasn't Eve. You know, it was Adam that got us in trouble. Because God gave the law to Adam. And when God came down in the cooler day, he didn't call for Eve. He called for Adam. You know, because he's the dude that got us really in trouble. And, and you see, and, and that's what I'm teaching the men in my class. And that is that Adam, a man, must have leadership. See, a man must be, be willing to say, no, we're not going to do that. Leadership. You got to, and you got to take responsibility. And of course, uh, that's, uh, that's a whole nother story. But it is important for every man, it's important for every man to understand who he is, understand why he was created and what he was created to be. And once you understand that, you can take dominion. But you cannot take dominion. You say, well, I'm doing fine, Doc. I'm doing, I'm doing real fine. I got five cars. I got four houses. I got money in the bank. And that's fine. But you're not nearly what you should be. You're not nearly what you could be if you just knew who you really were. And you say you got five highs, you could have ten. If you really knew who you really were and who you really are. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to take dominion. dominion. And he wants the man to take, uh, to take dominion. And now, uh, this morning I made one strong point. I didn't deal with it, but I made one strong point. And that is that the husband has to see himself. He has to see himself. Uh, modeling Christ. 
because that's in the marriage relationship. And that ain't easy to do. But that's the way you have to see yourself. And, and the woman has to see herself as modeling the church. And that's the relationship. That's the relationship. The woman models the church and the man models Christ. And as the church is responsible to Christ, so is the woman responsible to her husband. And as Christ loved the church, the man must love his wife. Understand the meaning and the definition of love. And, and, and so that's, that's the model. That's the model. And if you understand that model, then everything will be all right. The church can't rebel against Christ. I mean, why, what would we look like telling Christ what to do? You see what I'm saying? So, and you know what that means? That means that when a woman gets ready to marry a man, she has to understand these dynamics. You have to understand that this man that you're about to marry is a model of Christ and you are to respect him. Because the difference between the first Adam and the second, and I'm getting off, but the, the difference between the first Adam and the, there were two Adams, the first Adam and the second Adam. Adam in the Garden of Eden, which was the first Adam, I knew that if he ate that fruit, he would die. And when Eve walked up and gave, and, 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 and gave him that fruit, he knew. He knew that if he would eat it, he would die. He knew that, but he chose to die, watch this, he chose to die with his wife. That's the first Adam. The second Adam didn't make that mistake. The, 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 the first, the, the second Adam decided not to die with, but to die for. Y'all missed that, y'all didn't get that before. Yeah, you see, the first Adam decided to die with his wife, but the second Adam decided to die for his wife. And, 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 and when you understand these, and see, this is strong stuff, and when you understand these dynamics, see, the, 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 absolutely, absolutely, man, strong stuff. When you understand that, then nothing can tear you apart. But if you don't understand, and if you go in there because of the way she looks and the way he looks and what he has and what she has, and if you go in with that kind of mindset, set, it's not going to last. And, and so uh, there, is, there is something uh, about men and fathers that they must know. And, 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 I, and according to this morning, uh, Isaiah 32 and verse 2, and Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse uh, number 1, run to and fro in the streets of Jerusalem and find me a man. Run, don't walk for run, because they're scarce. Find me a man. Find me a man. And then even when you find them, then he's got to, if any, if any one of them you find that's supposed to be a man, then there's certain qualification he must have. He must be able to execute judgment. And he must understand uh, and, and love the truth. And, and so uh, what I'm saying to uh, fathers, uh, it's not always easy to be a dad. And sometimes wives don't understand that. And sometimes children don't understand that. But it's not easy to be a dad. You know, what does he do? Well, you just don't understand the dynamics. See, you don't understand the dynamics. You, you, you don't understand the psychosocial stuff that go on. And, and sometimes, you know, we as family, we don't understand what a man goes through in the run of the day. That is an Afro-American man. You don't understand what, what he goes through in the run of the day. Now, he may just let it run off, his, run off his shoulder like water, but let me just tell you, that stuff can get you down. I mean, here you're talking to somebody and you know you know what they want to do to you. You, you. you know that they are not going to let you do the right. They're not going to do the right thing by you. You just got to be smart enough to get by them. And that, that wears on your heart. And it's every day. It's every day. And so 
it is important that every man understand that there's nothing wrong with having needs, as this man did in the Bible. There's nothing wrong with having needs. Just know where to take your needs. Don't take your need to the wrong person. Don't take your need to, your need to the wrong place. And then the, the second point I made this morning is uh, bring Jesus home with you. And then I talked about Exodus chapter number 12 where the father was given the responsibility of putting the blood on the doorpost. What does that mean? That means protect your house. That's what that means. It means protect your house. What does that mean? That means make sure that nobody brings anything in your house that's displeasing to God. It doesn't matter what anybody says. You don't bring anything in your house that's not pleasing to God. Don't let anybody bring anything in your house that's not pleasing to God. And in Joshua chapter 24 and verse number 15, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I know what folks say when I preach like this. They say, well, Doc, you don't understand. This is 2010. This is not, teen, this is not 1910, Doc. This is 2010, and things have changed. No, things have changed. No, nothing changes. <laughs> nothing really changes. No, no, but change. And, 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 and you're right. God doesn't change. You see, God, and the law of God doesn't change. So what, what then must we do? We must then find out what is our models in the Bible. How does, God, how does God expect the man to act and to react? How does God expect a man to be a man? And it's right there in the book. It's right there in the book. And the wife has a responsibility to the man, and the man has a responsibility to the wife. And the wife has to understand that, and the man. Now, there are things that can break that, break that relationship down, of course. But there are things that can break it and shadow it. But there is a the, every woman has a responsibility to the man, to her husband, and the husband has a responsibility to the wife. And the only way that's going to work is they have to respect each other. Because when respect is gone, the matter, the the the, 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 the marriage is shattered. And so, what I'm saying to you, to all the men today. And, and that is, don't be ashamed to take your needs to Christ, and don't be ashamed to bring Christ to your house. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to take control of your house. I said this morning, don't be ashamed to look in that refrigerator, and there's something that ain't supposed to be in there, you, you raise the roof. And, and don't be ashamed to go in that room if that boy got some stuff in there ain't supposed to be in there. That's your house. That, 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 that's, that's, that's your, and you know, sometimes that is, sometimes daddy smoke that stuff with their sons. That was sometimes the daddy and the son get together and, you know, put down four, five or six cans of beer. Well, that's not the way a Christian father is supposed to act. And I would say to all of those of you who are here tonight, and that is respect God and respect the word of God. And what Jariah's daughter saw in her father was tremendous. Now, and the thing that pulls all this together is love. Let me sum this up. Uh, what, what do you think it was that motivated Jariah's to go to find Jesus? Love. What do you think it was that motivated Jariah's when he found him to fall prostrate down on the, on the ground and worship him? love. What do you think it was that caused Jarius, who was ruler in the synagogue, and not only that, but he was the clerk of the Capronian uh, community, and people knew him, and he knew, uh, people knew him, and he knew the people, but he was not ashamed. You see, that's the point. He was not, a, what was he trying to do? He was trying to save his house. And it was love that motivated him to do that. What do you think it was that caused him to let Jesus come into his house? Love. What do you think it was that uh, caused him to allow Jesus to take over? See, Jesus went in there and took over. He didn't ask the right, can I get these folk out of here? He knew they had no business in there. And as a result, the Bible says he put them all. So what, 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 what is motivating this father is love. And love covers a multitude of sin. And I would hope that the message today, 
uh, has been a benefit to the men of our church. And I say again, we had almost 100 men up here this morning uh, rededicating and dedicating their life to Jesus Christ. And I would hope they mean it. I, I would hope they mean it. I meant to say that today, but I, we got kind of carried away with the baptisms that we had today. But I meant to say to them today that I hope you mean this. Hope you mean this. You say, there's no need to come in up here for, for this prayer and then you go back home and forget that we prayed for you. Because if you want the Lord to bless you, you're going to have to do your part. you got to do your part. And, 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 and if, and I said, we, I'm not going to be up here long tonight, and if perchance you're here tonight and, and you're in this building tonight and you want to be saved and you are not saved and you want to be a member of the body of Christ and you are not a member of the body of Christ, you want to be a member of the church of Christ and you're not a member of the church of Christ, well, if you have faith in the Lord and if you will believe that he died and was buried and rose again the third day for your sins and willing to repent of all of your sins and confess his name as those folk did this morning, we will baptize you tonight and you will be a child of God. And if you're here tonight and you're one of those men that were here tonight and was not here this morning, just remember the points of the lesson. And that is, number one, uh, Jeriah's had a need, but he took his need to Jesus Christ. And not only did he take his need to Jesus Christ, but he wasn't ashamed for Jesus Christ to come into his home. And if you have these two things, and you're ready then uh, to start having the kind of home that God would have you have. And if you need prayer tonight, you want the church to pray for you that you might be a better man and a stronger man. And that you might be a better woman and a stronger woman. And then, uh, unfortunately, I didn't do this on Mother's Day. I guess I should have, but I think I've done it once before. And that is... Um, you know, when you understand that, and I want to get back on this because it'll be here too long, but when I get back on this model, this model where the wife models uh, the church and, Christ, and the man models Christ, and it's because of that, it's because of that relationship, uh, that's what cements the relationship, and that the, the wife is supposed to be subject to the man in everything the Bible said, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number three, 23. And of course, I didn't deal with that subjection thing uh, this morning, but I think I've dealt with it once or twice since I've been here. But um, uh, it's important uh, for, for wives to understand that they must be subject to their husband, but that doesn't mean a second-class citizen. See, subjection doesn't mean a second-class citizen. It doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that, that, that you are the carpet and, and, and the man or the husband walk on you. That doesn't mean that at all. Yeah, and not only must a woman be subject, but the man must be subject as well they're subject to each other. Yes, sir. And if you read the second chapter of 1 Peter, you will know that uh, about, uh, where God tells the woman to love, and it's amazing, and I'm getting off again, but it's amazing that God tells the wife to love her husband. But where do you find uh, 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 the husband love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church? But, but, but very rarely do you find God telling the wife to love the husband. That's natural with her. That's natural with her. Loving is natural with the woman. And then Peter says, love your husband, you know, with all sobriety. You know what that word sobriety means? That word sobriety means voluntary subjection. And that's your word. You see, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's the Christian woman's word. Uh, voluntary sobriety. Uh, voluntary subjection. That's what that word means. That word means that you, you can do it, you know how to do it, and probably you can do it better than the one who is doing it, but you don't do it, and you volunteer to step back and let someone else do it. That's what, that, that's what sobriety means. Sobriety means you can, but you don't. Sobriety means, see, it, it, it's, not, it, it's not a matter of, of, of a woman not being equal to a man because she is equal to a man. The Bible says God gave them dominion. That's in Genesis chapter 2. Them. Both of them. That's before the fall. He gave them dominion. He gave the woman as much dominion as he gave the man. And when you put the woman's ability with the man's ability, the world can't stop you. And that's what I tell couples. I tell couples that when you... When you put the brain of a woman with the brain of a man and they are working together, the world can't stop them. Amen. And nothing will be refused them because if she puts her intelligence with his intelligence, what can stop you? And the only thing that can stop you is when you allow somebody else to come in between. 
That's when you allow them mother-in-laws and, 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 and other in-law and other outlaws uh, to come in there. You see? And, 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 and that's why the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 22, and hath put all things under his feet and gave it to be head over all things to the church. For, and he is the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Christ is the fullness of the church. There ain't no room between Christ and the church. You can't be in Christ and out of the church. You can't be in the church and out of Christ. There is no room between Christ and the church. You see? And, and when you think about that model, that where the husband models Christ and the, and the woman models the church, there is no room in there. You can't get your mother-in-law in there. You can't get your father-in-law in there. You can't get your uncle in there. You can't... And I told my class the other day, you know, sometimes mothers can just destroy people their daughter's marriage. That's right. Mothers can destroy a marriage. Quick! I mean, she'll call over there and she said, that's not the way he eats his grits. He doesn't like his eggs that way. Well, she, you see, what's happening now is you allowing somebody to get in that doesn't belong in there. Doesn't belong. And for this cause, the Bible says, shall a man leave? God said, get out of there. Because if you don't get out of there, mama going to run that thing. Amen. I was extending the invitation. Um, I, I, if... <laughs> And if, if perchance, if perchance you're here and you want to say yes to the Lord, if perchance you're here and you want to say yes to Jesus, if perchance you're here and you want the Lord uh, to forgive you of your sins and you want to make a confession of sins, you can do that tonight. All you need to do is just come forward and just say, brothers and sisters, I've sinned, I've repented, and I want the church to pray for me, and we will pray for you. And if you just want the church to pray for you that you might have strength for the difficult battle ahead, then you can do that even tonight. Then do it right now. Let us all stand quickly while we're standing. Let's sing the invitation There's song. There's not a friend like the lovely Jesus singing that no, no not one. Singing, singing that no, no, not one. None else could heal all our souls. This is singing that no, no not one. Singing no, no Don't you know that Jesus knows? 